Hello everybody and welcome to a, another Grand Arena match. This one's a little different. I didn't have enough time to sit down and record my battles live as I was doing them. Uh, but I did snag all of them on my phone when I could. And I'm going to go over the combination of all of them here. Uh, I started out with a Lord Vader battle actually right away as soon as I could. Uh, like 5pm my time when GSE opened. And knocked it out just trying to get some mind games going on. Um, I don't know if that did or didn't work, uh, but or if that was the reason that he had trouble on my defense. But as I'll show you later, he slipped up quite a bit. Uh, so I love this counter. It's just so easy when you have cat like that. That attack is insane. Of course, you need the data cron, but dash just deals out damage like nobody's business. Um, even more so when he gets that lifeblood on. And I, I want to try out Ben Solo instead of Cat, because I'd like to save Cat, of course, for Jedi Master Kenobi. Uh, but with Moff Gideon on the other team, I didn't think I'd have enough damage output without Cat. She gives that plus 50% offense and crit damage to Dash um, and other scoundrels, unaligned force users, Galactic Republic. Uh, I think the fact that Cat is a scoundrel, uh, it doesn't make a ton of sense, and it just makes her even that much overpowered. It makes her that much more flexible. Uh, but this match is just uh, Dash gunning him down over time. Uh, Bam actually gets out some pretty big hits at the end. Uh, his Whistling Birds hit for over 10k each, uh, which if he had full 20, that's like 200k damage. Yeah, just gunning down Lord Vader. Uh, yeah, he's on Death's Door, and Bam is going to be the one to finish him off. Right there. A pretty big hit. Um, and next, he had a Sith Eternal on defense, kind of weird, but he had the Savage Omicron with it, uh, so I didn't want to mess around. Uh, without Datacrons on Sith Eternal or whatever, um, and without maybe the Savage Omicron, soloing is a good option with Supreme Leader Kylo, but didn't really want to go for that here. Um, I did not feel safe with it. And throughout the battle, I did get my hopes up that I would be able to... Something, uh, I would be able to come out without losing anyone. Um, but I lost that hope once I started seeing how fast Sith Eternal was gaining his ultimate charge. Uh, since he did link Sith Trooper, and Sith Trooper is attacking a lot out of turn, he, he's generating ultimate much faster. Yeah, you see it goes up every time Sith Trooper attacks. Here's just Savage and Sith Eternal. Um, the level 9 ability he had was the one that makes him beefier. Um, so, I, you know, I, yeah, I tried to, you know, throw everything at him and hopefully get him out first. But I realized that wasn't going to happen. He just kept healing, so I needed to start going after Savage instead. Uh, who is not flimsy himself either. So yeah, he gets the ultimate off. I know it's, you know, it's not gonna be. Uh, the other teammates are not long for this world, and yeah, the whole team one shot. Not a huge surprise, but I did get a little nervous here because you know he's in ult. It's one v one. He gets that shock out. It, was I gonna be able to get through? And. I did, uh, but this is not the way I want to finish out a battle like this because I was I was worried he was going to get to that uh, special. I don't know if this next turn he would have gotten it, um, but I wasn't ultimate. And yeah, one right, one battle right after the other here. We got CLS versus Gas, and I did equip my data run that has 60% dodge, which usually helps out a bit. Uh, the bonuses for smugglers in this set, other than dash, it's just you don't have many smugglers. Uh, so it's kind of a disappointing light side faction. So yeah, just go all in on gas here. Try to knock him down and then get everyone down as soon as you can. But fives just starts running circles around people. Uh, maybe I should have done his basic there. Um, probably should have actually. Just to get 
uh, fives down first and then use that assist on Rex instead. Uh, and that kind of costs me a little bit here. Not too much, but I only got fives down, which is just terrible for this counter. Uh, you want all of them down before gas stands up. Um, and usually having one still left up is pretty bad, but having all three left uh, wasn't look, looking too good, especially with CLS on death's door there. There he died. I, I thought for sure I was going to lose this match. Uh, but Gas, he kind of spread the love, which allowed me to kind of recover. Uh, yeah, like if he just picked one target and stuck with him, probably going to be a win for, for Gas. Uh, but the fact that they, he doesn't, he can't get crit and can't cleanse helped me out with the stuns. Next up, Bad Batch versus Qui Gon. And it was a little fast, but that Kiati Moody had 297 speed. So I know they're going fast. Um, it just threw some armor on my team. And I know Rucker can probably handle it. Yeah, there. And then it's off the races. This is a pretty solid counter. Um, before when they had the 25% turn meter, they could start to run circles around Bad Batch, but without it, pretty much sitting ducks again. Um, and I think uh, General Kenobi was kind of, of a waste to slot on this team for my opponent. Yeah, easy win, 65. And next up we have Malgus. Um, I'm used to everyone having just that Malgus Datacron where he just jumps ad infinitum uh, doing big damage, uh, but my opponent didn't actually have it, so I felt pretty safe just Sith Eternal and Watt here, especially since I have that Datacron that makes me get to ultimate faster. And this is a slow match, kind of a boring match. Um, obviously you have to link up Malgus since he's taunting. Uh, but I wanted Darth Revan next since he's the second fastest and is going to be going more. Uh, and sometimes he double taps so I can charge the ultimate faster. A Watt, never, never an option to keep him alive. Uh, but yeah, it's just whittling through them right now until we get to ultimate. But yeah, they just they don't have that much damage output without that big jump. I see 4,000, 16,000 to 7,500. Malgus did like less than 4,000 on his attack. So they're not offensive powerhouses without all those bonuses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know Seth Eternal is, is decently resilient on his own, but um, not sure what's going to happen after Malgus' data chron expires. Uh, not going to be asking for sure, but I'm not sure if there will be non-galactic legend counters or people will still feel the need to bring in a GL or two shot Amalgus team. And here I put it on auto and he just relinked, which I hate. I hate how long that animation takes. Um, it's a pet peeve of mine in this game if they have slow animations. But yeah, easy 65. He had a shorty team uh, and he actually had trouble on my sortie so that kind of gave me a warning like okay don't do what this guy did uh, just don't mess around with sortie uh, so I used Jedi Knight Revan he didn't have any galactic legends on his back wall um, so I knew I was gonna need uh, JKR and Jolie with my uh, Jedi Master Luke uh, so I felt fine just taking a, a semi-classic JKR team with Johani as well just for some extra speed and it's, it's a little slow to close out because I'm trying to recover banners. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a pretty, pretty sure thing at this point. I, I got a little tiny bit worried uh, after that opening salvo because they were getting people pretty weak. And if they were able to keep that up, it wouldn't be pretty. Uh, but getting buff immunity locked on sortie just shuts her down completely. She can't get that bonus protection, which makes her so, so tanky. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. It's pretty much just a walk in the park at this point. Uh, IG-88's always just hanging under stealth there. 
But and I could have knocked that T3 pretty easily before Sorty, but Sorty's the, the the threat, so just wanted to knock her out. An IG88 even dying from Yoda's AoE, not known as a big damage AoE, but still got the job done. And when I called Bastille there, I was trying to recover protection. Uh, next battle, um, this is on the front wall. It's I just did Iden versus Mon Mothma. Simple counter. Um, I've only lost it once in 3v3, I believe. That was pretty sad. That was one of my older Grand Arena videos. Well, not that old. It's like a few weeks ago. But uh, I just couldn't kill them, and eventually Kyle Katarn just went off for a huge hit. So, yeah, I haven't done this match as much in 5v5 because I see a lot of CLS, and this team with Grit is amazing to counter CLS. Uh, but just, yeah, super resilient team. Love the buff dispel there. Got double tanks, so I feel pretty safe. Um, <laughs> this counter is just wiped them out. And Death Mark with Death Trooper, that's that's awesome. That's uh beginning of the end for them. Now oh, right. Kara can't come back over and over. I just gotta take out Kyle and the Scout, and we are done here. Okay, that came out. Just a couple more hits. And that's it. It's clean 65. Uh, next up, I did have Starkiller on offense, and they didn't have the, that great of threats. Uh, so I just used it on this Separatist team because I wanted to make sure I could get full banners. Uh, slotted in bed solo instead of Vsys just because I like him better than Vsys. And it just. Uh, I hate to see. Good new characters go to waste, although he didn't do much here. This is just Mario Jade hopping around, stunning everyone, AoEing them to death, and then we just have to wait and get stuck behind uh, Django until he gets out of damage immunity. But obviously, I do have the cooldown reduction, Data Crawl on this team. Uh, Star Killer doesn't get as many turns here. And I make a mistake later with Ben's abilities. I wasn't paying attention, and I just button mashed his first special for one, uh, which removed turn meter from Django. Um, so that wasn't the one, but I think I got close to full turn meter on him. I just spam Babe Six because I don't want to gain too much turn meter. I just want him to go. But yeah, pay attention to the kits. Um, I used this special, reduce all certain meter. I didn't do anything, it didn't help me. He wasn't even going to do damage. I was just like, eh, I kind of want to see his animation. I forgot about the terminator reduction. Um, so yeah, just delete the inevitable here. Any second now, he's taking a turn. There we go. And then you just cut through him like a knife through hot butter. Love this dude. And this is, uh, spoiler alert, my only loss uh, of a match throughout this round. And it's just because I was sloppy. I was like, you know, this is a pretty easy match. I should have been doing basics on Radis, And then not basic and Cassian. Because you want to keep them alive. And then I should have just been doing uh, Merciless Massacre every time it popped up to try to cycle through and really hit down Radis because he's the win condition for them and the, the win condition for you. You just need to get him out. Jin's not going down. And, you know, you would think when a match looks like this, you're going to win. Uh, like They look like they're on death's door. You've you got a full team. Haven't really been touched much. And I tried it there. I was like, I don't think this will kill, but... So yeah, it starts getting into my other uh, 
other allies turns, which is never good. He starts recovering a little bit. Uh, Jin starts recovering. And I was like, okay, I got one more Merciless Massacre. And this <laughs> but no, fuck, just wipes out the whole team. I wasn't even mad. Uh, that was pretty funny that I underestimated it like that and just played it so sloppy. <laughs> uh, so I didn't want to mess around. They had preloaded turn meter. I still had JMK. No cat, so this is overkill, but you know, it's not too much overkill. Uh, they get a bunch of turns, and then just perform surgery to pick them apart slowly. We get Cassian, because he can go down, and he's more vulnerable, and go for Biston. Uh, not really a damage, big damage dealer on this team. I mean, Ahsoka does get some good hits. Mace can uh, do some good damage here and there. Oh, uh, that's pretty good damage. It was 48k. Uh, but the main damage dealer is JMK. Uh, I wanted to save Cam because in the, I'll use him in another match after this. I want to keep him with Qui-Gon and Anakin uh, because that's really what, where he wants to go, uh, if at all possible. And yeah, Radis is the obvious next choice once I got those other two out. Uh, just really need to make sure you take him out. I don't think, I mean, even if he got to his little ultimate, I don't think he'd do anything against JMK, but it's still a pretty scary move. And then it's just getting through the Pathfinder. More hits. Didn't really need to do that. I could have just done basic, but uh, that is it for that one. 45. And... Just wanted to use my last Galactic Legend. Got JML. Again, it's a pretty strong team. I almost lost Ezra. I probably just shouldn't have even brought him in. I, I, there is no need to bring in five teammates for this. Uh, but I want to take it. The TM removal was great there. I want to take it Chewbacca first before I get a turn with Luke because I want to be able to stun with him. Yeah, so that worked out. Then I'm able to stun the team. And my other main task is trying to heal up Ezra. So I start calling assists with Hermit Yoda when possible. to do that. So he's got the full health. Um, and then I realize I can just, when I target Ezra with this ability, it's a little bit better than Hermit Yoda because he'll heal based on Jedi Master Luke's protection. Uh, so if I was doing that just one more time, I probably would have been able to get him to full health. Uh, didn't quite work, or full protection, but oh, well, actually, uh, it counted. So that works. I got this BAM team here uh, with the level 9 Datacron. But the, the best team I had left was Qui-Gon, and I don't use him that much on offense, so I... I I was looking forward to this. It's just dishing out some damage. Uh, when armor shed first, 150k. Um, I yeah, I wasn't saving the AOE. I wasn't planning on anyone dying, so I just smashed it. And Cam's gonna go off for a couple hits worth like 200k, which is just beautiful. Yeah, 140,000. <laughs> At least I think he does. He gets 200k. Wanted to dispel there. Just keep hitting it. Yeah, 235,000. Insane. Oh, and 159,000. 112. 112. I love that damage output. And out of ships, he did not set profundity or executor, so it was pretty simple operation although it definitely could have gone more smoothly uh, I don't do profundity versus negotiator much because uh, I don't see it in squad arena and usually I need it for their executor or uh, their profundity uh, but I you know I kind of forgot about the turn meter uh, manipulation clause where they're not getting any so I kind of played this like normal negotiator matchup where you don't want to 
uh, get enemies under 100% health because they'll trigger his uh, his bonus is a 100% turn meter. But I really didn't need to worry about that, so that probably led to some misplays here. Um, I could have just been going more all out on fives to try to actually kill him since he was more useful. Uh, and I could have gone more all in on this guy. Or maybe I do anyway, I'm not sure. Yeah, he's gonna go under stealth. Uh, but I got, er, he, he kind of did, but I got dispelled right away to the, with the, the cysts. That uh, so didn't matter. And yeah, they actually got the Y-Wing there, so that was pretty sloppy of me. Um, still wasn't worried about losing. But yeah, when you're using Profundity against a lesser ship like Negotiator, you don't really want to make those mistakes like that. Yeah, it's uh, just a cleanup job here. Uh, not, like, not like second battle, but just trying to take care of what's left out there. I'm gonna go 67. Not too bad, but that's not that's not what you want with that matchup. Uh, next, I ha they had Empire on defense, which is another pretty strong fleet. So I want to take a Malevolence. Uh, Malevolence is always you know, more of a safe fleet to me. It's not the highest banners. But uh, when you're in control on offense, I just feel pretty comfortable using Malevolence against any opposing team. Uh, plus, I really hate this lineup. I hate going against it. Uh, the second sister ship seems like it's the Grandmaster Yoda of ships. It gets so many turns. Pretty obnoxious. Uh, it seems like it's always going. Uh, but I was able to do this mass assist here and make good progress on the bomber. But he's quite tanky. Um, so it did not go as easily as I would like. Finished him off. Um, I'm kind of glad it took a little time because I didn't want to have to be forced to fight to go at the TIE Fighter pilot because he got the unfortunate taunt. Which is the last... Uh, enemy you want to taunt with spy. I know that uh, getting the shuttle out is important because otherwise everyone's going to be much more. Every other opponent is going to be much harder to get through. So I went at them first. Sadly, they get their ultimate off just super fast. Uh, and it looks like I could have lost here. So it was kind of worrisome. I just have Spy hanging out over there in stealth. I fed some turn meter there, but I really wanted to get that uh, out of the way. And Gauntlet came in, healed up the second sister. So I am blessed with her presence a little bit longer, unfortunately. And I think he was able to, yeah, knock out my bomber. <laughs> this ship just seems like a cat. It's got nine lives. Very annoying. 60. It's okay. Uh, but once I go over my defense, you'll see I wasn't too worried um, at this point. Because he had done all his attacks before me. And I knew it. Uh, the victory wasn't really in doubt. Uh, so I actually use Executrix because I just enjoy the extra turn meter that you're getting, extra offense. Um, it's just a fun ship. Uh, th throughout doing this profundity counter with it, I've kind of enjoy using Executrix, uh, which is a big reason I am pretty excited for the Scythe coming out. Uh, I have I did another video on it. I don't think you should skip it. I think it's going to make this fleet amazing. Um, Better than Tarkin, I, you might be able to sport two fleets, but I don't. I don't know if you'd want to unless they move to a four, uh, four fleet uh, setup in GAC. But yeah, the damage is pretty nice on this team. Getting the offense up, defense penetration up, just love that. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, 62,000 on a non-core. 135,000. Uh, that's why I just love using Executrix when I get the chance. Sally, he wiped out my Vader. Um, really hate that. And I healed up a second sister there. 140,000 with the TIE Fighter Pilot. Uh, and that's going to go up with the Scythe. Because he grants offense, extra offense with his special buff. And he just grants bonus offense to Empire Allies anyway. It's going to be a crazy ship. I know it will be hard to get and hard to use based on the pilot, but I am looking forward to that greatly. Uh, the Radis is such an annoying ship just because of the dodging. Uh, it's kind of like set four Datacrons just on a ship. It's evading all the time. You know you're going to win, uh, but it just takes so long because it just dodge everything. And I had to wait for the ultimate to actually finish him off. Well, that was that. And, uh, oh, pause. Uh, that's that. And I'll come back for the post-mortem and show that. So here I am for the post-mortem. Uh, I don't know if it's going to show. The yep, it's going to show. So what ended up happening with him after I did that first attack really early, uh, by the time I attacked next late at night, he had already done all his attacks. Took three to get through Sortie, um, which was an instant payoff because I just finished this team, got them all to R5. Uh, took two against Lord Vader. I am pretty impressed that he was able to do that, actually, um, because it's just always hard if you're not using that raid dash counter. Um, he one-shot these two, but then he really had a lot of trouble. Um, Malgus took eight battles to get through. Now, by the time you get to the eighth battle, I don't know how you have something to handle a solo Malgus at that point, but he he pulled it off. Props to him. Um, I had Imperial Tie Fighters, uh, Imperial Troopers, because I just didn't think I was going to need them on offense, and I thought they were strong enough to I need something for. Uh, he couldn't get past Bounty Hunters in the end. I knew I wouldn't need these on offense, so I left him here. Gassy couldn't get by. Uh, he did clear the back wall but it was very hard for him. Um, he took two battles on Grievous. He took two battles on Mon Mothma. Which usually you're not seeing that at this level. Um, Jedi training, wait, Ray, one shot. Not surprised there. So I guess it wasn't like too hard, but a, he definitely stretched just to be able to clear that back wall. Uh, so pretty easy match. Uh, I'm happy with how it went. Uh, knocking this team out first, I think might have gotten in his head. Um, his or her head. Uh, but might have gotten in their head and they I got that 71 banners and they might have think, oh man, what the heck? What happened with this guy? Um, and then maybe got nervous and executed poorly. But who knows? Uh, that's my speculation. Uh, happy with the match. Uh, ready for next one. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Sanjita signing out.